I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you are well and keeping well in the Lord. Um, today I would like to uh, maybe just um, go through what we do as the health board in our church, PCA Langata, and then uh, probably just speak a bit about uh, nurturing our mental health uh, through self-care. So the health board uh, is part of the CMB, that's the, the church um, committee, the board uh, where we uh, join hands with the other leaders, the management board, um, to, to, to bring um, matters related to health um, to the attention of our congregation and also see how to better um, enrich the lives of our congregants. Yeah? So some of the things we do, we try and uh, carry out webinars uh, where we bring in teachings uh, about health, um, health topics, um, and also um, advise uh, congregants on how they can, you know, um, seek um, help uh, as far as their health is concerned. Yeah. So this this month, the month of October, and actually the first week of the month, the Presbyterian Church is celebrating the Health Week, uh, which started from second to eighth. And um, the theme this year is Jehovah Restores My Health, um, taken from the book of Jeremiah 33, verse 6. Um, this week, we will be carrying out quite a number of activities, and this podcast is just one of them. And um, I will go straight into the topic of the day. Uh, but before I do so, I will encourage any health member, any health worker out there that is a congregant or a member of this church, please do reach out and join us so that we can continue doing the good work uh, that God has mandated us to do. So um, I'll be speaking about nurturing mental health through self-care. And um, it comes, there's a, very, a verse that I like, uh, Philippians 4, 6 to 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known um, to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is just one of the many verses that supports the need for self-care um, as part of the way we nurture mental health. Um, one of the things I believe is that our greatest asset is the mind. Um, and, and again, we see again from the book of uh, 2 Timothy, um, chapter 1, verse 7, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. This says that God himself, he has ordained or he has mandated us to take care of that mind that he has given us. He gave us a sound mind, and that is an asset we need to take care of. Yeah? So we need to preserve our mental health at all costs. Now, as Christians, we do understand um, the need of caring, for our bodies, we say that our body is the temple of the Lord. It is important to take care of our spirit and our mind falls in that space as well because these are God's precious uh, gifts. So self-care is not just indulgence. It is actually a divine duty, I would say. Um, we do know from the Bible that Jesus retreated uh, to the wilderness for prayer and rest, yeah? So you can imagine if Jesus was to do that, who are we not to do the same, yeah? So we need to take time to be still and nurture uh, our mental health being. So I'll just share a few tips on how we can nurture our mental health. Uh, one, it is important to set time aside for prayer and meditation. Uh, through prayer and meditation, we get comfort and we get guidance through the word of God. Um, and this uh, helps to put us at peace, knowing that the God we serve will actually come through for us in the many circumstances that we might be facing. Um, another way of nurturing is through fellowship or community. Um, I do like, for example, our church does have um, the weekly fellowships, yeah? what we call the districts. We have various other fellowships that happen at one point or another in the church. And these are important, that connection with one another. It is important because it becomes a place to share your burdens. It becomes a place to receive encouragement, yeah? Which are key things in actually um, helping us to remain still or at least to get some sort of, of peace within us, yeah? 
Um, another pointer is uh, taking care of our physical well-being. So regular exercises, I know this has been said uh, quite a bit. It is important to ensure that at least you spend 45 minutes to, I, I usually say, well, anything from 30 minutes to one hour is good time of regular exercises at least four to five um, days a week. Ensure we are having a balanced diet, that is important, and also enough rest. We say for an adult, it is important to have at least seven hours of rest. That is good time uh, to be able to reset. Now, well, we always talk about the Sabbath day, and the Sabbath day is actually a day of rest. It is a day that has been set aside for us to worship and give um, you know, reverence to our God. So this is a day for relaxation, for nourishing our souls and our minds. And therefore, I would actually um, really encourage that we actually observe the Sabbath day, just as the Bible has asked us to do. Um, another tip is to unplug from technology. And I know this is technology we are using. But we say um, that the use of technology has gone to a, a, a higher level that might actually be uh, not very helpful for us. And what do I mean by this? Screen time, what we call screen time, you know? Any time, any minute you have, you want to go on, on Instagram, you want to go on Facebook, you want to go, you, you never have time to yourself. Any time to yourself is spent on technology. I would advise that you actually take time to yourself for meditation, for prayer, for rest, without your gadgets, which is important. And I'm sure for those who have read here and there, you have seen the kind of effect that these lights that are emitted by our gadgets have on our minds. And that's why some people struggle with things like insomnia. So it would be good to just um, take a step back and reduce on the number of you know, hours you put in um, to screen time or you, the use of technology. Um, another tip I like uh, remembering is practicing gratitude. Count your blessings. We sing um, every other time in church and we say, you know, count your blessings one by one. It is important because it's very easy in this life to, to, you know, to focus on the bad things that have happened to us. But when you learn a gratitude, when you learn to count or just reflect on the good things that have happened, it has an effect to your mind and to the way you do your things. Even your, your mood gets lifted once you focus on the good things that have happened. Another thing I like to say is you set your boundaries. It is okay to say no. It is okay to say when you're not able to do something. Um, let's not go around trying to please everybody. That is not possible. Do not take on more than you can chew. Um, it will just weigh you down. And at the end of the day, you will not be able to give your best. Just take what you're able to do and then give your best at it. Yeah? And then seek professional help. Um, they are not all things, you know, can be, you know, um, dealt with all these things that I am saying. Sometimes it is okay to raise your hand and say, hey, I need help. And we do have all these uh, people who can help. We do have therapists. We have uh, counselors who can actually come to your aid. And that is one of the things that the health board can do. We can actually point you to the right uh, person for help. Um, then we have the church, uh, serving in church. Um, I know sometimes there are people who might feel, oh, you know, I'm, I'm very busy, I have my work schedule is very busy, but serving in church is one of the self-care tips that you can actually practice. Because by serving others, you know, there is some therapy, or it is actually therapeutic when you're serving others, you know. When you share those kinds of uh, acts of kindness, when you go out of your way, to actually be there, you know, to be the usher of the day, to read a Bible verse, to be the, you know, the leader of the choir. All these things, the serving in church is actually one of the ways that um, you, you can actually practice self-care. And it still gives you that connection that we are saying with people, with the community, in fellowship, yeah? And then finally, self-compassion. Um, a lot of times we are our worst, you know, critics. We, we beat ourselves so hard. Every time something goes wrong, we are usually, you know, we castigate ourselves even before the punishment comes through for whatever wrong has been done. It is okay sometimes to sit and say, well done, Eva. 
well done. Good job. It's okay. It didn't go as you wanted, but it can be better next time. So I would really, really suggest that we practice self-compassion to enable us uh, maintain or preserve our mental health. We can only serve God, we can only serve our communities if we are at our best, if we are taking care of ourselves. And therefore, my urge to all of us is that let's practice some of these tips, if not all, to try and um, preserve our mental health. And more so, you can see most of these things will actually enhance our relationship with God. So I will leave you with the words of uh, First Timothy, um, I mean Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7, where God has given us a spirit. Uh, you know, he's given us a sound mind, and therefore we need to protect it and take care of it at all costs. Thank you very much. God bless you all.